Welcome final expense agents and brokers to the most popular audio training and podcast in the industry, The Lead Jerk Show, where we cut through the red tape and give you only the best in expert interviews. So strap in and grab a cold beverage and get ready to learn and earn. Now it's my pleasure to introduce you to the one and only Matt Lowry, also known as The Lead Jerk. Right, everybody, we've got Peter Walker on the uh, program today, and he is out of uh, Texas. Um, it's a pretty good interview. He's going to um, talk about uh, how he got into final expense, uh, what his success has been over the last uh, few months, uh, typical type of leads he runs, what kind of success he's seeing, and um, you know, return on investment and so forth. So, uh, pretty good interview. Um, Peter's a really, really, really down to earth and a good guy. Got a lot of uh, background in business um, in the restaurant industry as well. So this makes for a pretty interesting interview. Remember, everybody, for the best final expense leads in the country, visit www.theleadjerk.com. Again, www.theleadjerk.com. Thank you. All right, everybody. This is Matt Lowry. We're here with uh, Peter Walker today. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit with him about uh, how he got in final expense and what his experience has been, how he's been doing. And uh, Peter, if you want to go ahead and take it over, I know you're you're calling from the great state of Texas, and if you could just fill everybody in on kind of how you got in final expense and uh, what you've had going on the last few months. All right. Well, thanks, Matt. I am. Um, I'm actually, as you said, I'm I'm brand new to final expense. Um, I moved uh, moved to Texas uh, about two years ago to open up another restaurant. I, I have a restaurant in uh, Los Angeles that I started in 2003, and um, I, uh, I've been looking to move to Texas for, for some time now, and California is just really, really tough to, to run business, you know, with minimum wage issues, right. and all the law and local regulations and so forth. And so Texas has been on my radar, and, you know, there's three little kids. I wanted to, I wanted to give them, you know, more of a, a classic upbringing, of, you know, other than the Los Angeles uh, kind of lifestyle. So, but anyway, so I, uh, so I opened my restaurant a couple of years ago, and the way these things go is the first, uh, first two three years in the restaurant business is, is the toughest, make or break, and you don't really pay yourself. And um, the, you know, my my role in in each business is kind of setting it up, getting it going, hiring people, doing all that stuff. And once things are up and running, it's more of a managerial oversight kind of thing. And and to be honest, I was bored. So I was looking for something that I could <clears throat> do um, kind of on my own schedule and uh, hunted around, hunted around and, and landed on the final expense. And uh, to, to be honest, I didn't believe, I didn't believe what I saw. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You, you get on his on his bulletin boards and and you know it's, you you got these marketing guys telling you you can make this crazy amount of money uh, on your own schedule and uh, you know I'm glad I uh, I'm glad I stuck around and, and kind of dug into it a little dug into it a little bit more and uh, here I am. Sure. Well, I want to preface this interview by saying, uh, people, this is going to be a uh, probably a PG thirteen or an R rated uh, interview. <laughs> <laughs> so, why? Why? Are you, are you like uh, well, we, you're, you're originally, you're. Go ahead. Uh, people are gonna pick up on your accent anyway, but go ahead and tell them where you're, where you're originally from, Peter. <laughs> uh, I am from South Africa. There you so go. I, uh, I moved to the U.S. when I was uh, 15 years old. I came over with my mom and dad, and um, back in 1985, and uh, I've lived in New York. I've lived in. Uh, Atlanta, where you from, Matt? Right. And uh, recently, uh, about 15 years in California, Southern California, and and now Texas. And, and quite honestly, I'm I'm hoping that this is this is where I settle down. I, I've got to tell you, I love it down. Yeah, Texas is a great state. I've got family in Texas, actually, up in the Amarillo area. So, um, yeah, Texas the, the, is a the really weather, cool. The weather, the weather, the weather sucks in the summer, but people are <laughs> people are. People are awesome. Yeah, about like it is here in Atlanta. The, the weather's, yeah, bad. It's, you know, well, I don't know. It, it could go either way, I guess. You get snow there, too, right? Uh, 
Uh, no, not in Houston, man. It's oh, you're in Houston, Houston okay. Like, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Houston, Houston. Yeah, you're good. The summers look mild. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So. But like they say, like they say, Matt, everything looks better out of, out of the window of your luxury automobile. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> No, no doubt about it. That is a fact. That is a fact. Um, so, you know, obviously you got exposed to violent Spence, and then you, you you jumped in it. So, how long you've been doing it, and and what's you know how when you got rolling, what did you what did you start doing? I know um, you're in well, match groups. So, how'd you get rolling? I I started I started looking for something to do in October last year. And landed on Final Expense, and, and I'd actually hooked up with a company out of Florida who I, I won't name. Okay. But it's one of these uh, captive situations, um, and I, I was blown away. Uh, they, were, they were offering me sixty percent, you know, right. commission, and or, you know, it, even then, even that sounded, un, you know, too good to be true. And right. I started digging around, and <clears throat> luckily I ended up on the insurance forum, right. which I'm sure. You know, most of the guys listen to this, to this podcast um, are, are on it, and um, and it was a big wake up call. Like, holy cow! You know, right? You know, sixty sixty percent is ridiculous. You know, you got to get street level in, in the one hundreds, one fifteen, and so forth. So, um, at least starting. So, um, so I, uh, you know, then digging around. I uh, came across, well, a few people suggested me that I contact uh, Matt, who we know is part of 360. Mm-hmm. And, um, and uh, you know, that's the way I like to operate. He's, he's, he, he's one of the top salesmen, without a doubt, if not the top salesman for 2015. Right. Um, and we hit it off, man, you know, right away. He was very welcoming and uh, spent some days spent two, three days training with him in the field and, and yeah, just soaking it up. So I, uh, so in November, I took my test. I did the, the online course and uh, passed, passed my test. And in Texas, it takes about six weeks before you get your license. Right. So I, um, I and I honestly had a lot of time on my hands. And uh, so I hooked up with a bunch of local guys and I just did a hell of a lot of riding along with other agents, you know, picking up, picking up little little bits and bobs from 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 all the guys. I, I mean, I've, I've just had amazing experience watching these guys sell. So that by the time I got my license, I I mean, I was out the door, ready to roll. I had my kit together, had my pitch together. I knew the product. You know, I had my carriers, and uh, I hit the ground running. So what what do you think um, you know since you've been doing it, Peter? What what's the biggest hurdle um, that you see to overcome? You know, within final expense, you know, on a on a day to day basis during the during what I call your you know when you're in the groove. Look, you know, I I, I think you know when I'm speaking to people, you know, a lot of the guys that are doing this um, haven't worked for themselves before, and I think. I think that's got to be a big hurdle, you yeah. know, on average in the industry is, is getting out of bed um, and getting in front of those clients because that's where the money's made. You know, this is the ultimate numbers business. Yeah. There's nothing like it. There's absolutely nothing like it that I've, I've ever seen in my life. And I've been in business all my life. And uh, this, you know, this rewards you for hard work like nothing else. Um, and it's it's staying positive, and you know that's well, that's why being part of a part of a, a team, a group, mm-hmm. uh, supportive the supportive group is such a key factor. And I know you know that, Matt. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, we we're on that dinger, and uh, you know you could be having a crap day, and your buddy wins two, three grand, and it's just like, man, okay, cool, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, and it's it's fantastic. Yeah, um, that uh, you know, that text chat is yeah, it does really good. I mean, it, <laughs> well, some days you look down at it and you're like, oh, I've only wrote like a thousand. You look down, and you see somebody, oh, they're already at like five grand a day. Shit, I gotta get you know, I gotta, I gotta get going this week. You know. <laughs> that's it. That's it. You know, I mean, that, that, it, that's the game. You know, unless you're building a big down line, which is obviously there's business to be done there, but um, you know, ultimately. 
each and every guy that gets into this can, can make a hundred grand a year plus. Yep. Plus, plus a lot, you know, it depends on how hard you prepare to work. Yeah, and, they, and like you said, I think you hit on a key fact there is being self-employed. This, this is a business, and guys really have to look at it like it's a business because if they're coming from employment, you know, to work this, I, it was a natural transition for me, and it sounds like it was for you too because we've been self-employed for so long. Um, but running it as a business and having things set up, you know, whether – you're making your own phone calls to set appointments, whatever you're doing, whether you hire an appointment setter, whether you, you know, however you're getting your business, uh, you got to have it structured and you got to do the same thing day in and day out every week. And that's, you know, that's something that a lot of guys have trouble with. And, 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 and another thing, you know, taking three to $5,000 to have to start, which I think is five, maybe a little much, I'd say probably three would do it, but you know, that's not a lot of money to start a business. <laughs> I, okay, well, I, 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 I kind of disagree with you there a little bit. I yeah. think five is low. I think five is too low. I think ten is the proper number. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah, know, yeah. And even, 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 even that is a drop in the bucket. You know, I, so I, you know, I've got, I've got two restaurants, and, um, you know, some of you, some, some of you guys have been to them. Uh, uh, I know you haven't, Matt. You call them sick. Yeah. You've got 360 <laughs> training. <laughs> but, I had family you know, in. I had family I've got, in. I've got, I've got sixty. I've got sixty employees between two states, and you know my my rent alone is twenty grand a month. Before right. I'm starting. That doesn't cover insurance, and yeah, I mean it's it's it goes on and on and on, and payroll and you know liabilities and lawsuits yep. and all the other bullshit that comes along with it. Yep. So when you look at a business, a car like me looks at a business like this, and I'm, you know. Are you are you kidding me? I can make two hundred grand a year. Yeah. With you know, start starting up for ten Gs. Yep. You know, and all you, and all you're committing to is that that monthly lead cost or weekly lead cost. I mean, it's a, it's an absolute no brainer, and I I um. So that's why I say that ten ten grand is probably a better number, and the reason I say that is, you know, a, a lot of the guys that I spoke to said, Pete, start with uh, start with twenty leads. A week, right? So, um, I'm I'm saying you start with 30 leads a week, but you know if you're on a fixed lead program um, like we have at 360, and I know I'm not saying that's that's the only way to do it, and I know there's some fantastic companies out there. Um, but if you're on a fixed lead program, you're looking at five weeks before you get that first lead. So if you're doing 30 leads a week and you're putting all the the filters on, you you're at five grand before you even begin. Yep. Yep, and uh, you know, and then there's then there's obviously other costs of doing business, you know, and um, so I I think it's it's very very important that that any new agent like I like I am still today understands that you you want to fund this business correctly, and you'll make that money back quick quick, but you've got to fund it correctly, otherwise you're going to struggle for a year to build it up to. To make anything reasonable, you know? Yeah, I mean, if the guys will listen to a good trainer <clears throat> that's successful and just do what they say and follow their lead and kind of pay attention to their presentation and learn from them, they'll make their money back. It's a good return on investment. Um, sadly, what I see is most guys don't even have five grand. You know, um, it's it's one of those things where, you know, I talk to guys every day and they don't have three grand. And really, yeah. the the thing that I tell them is, look, you need to just, you know, at this point, maybe you want to just keep doing what you're doing and save money up, you know, because well, well, you're going to need it. That's where you come, that's where you come in with your team leads. That's you true. Know? That's it's, true. It's, it's, it, but, but then then what I would advise a, a, a new guy to do is, look, I've been there, man. I borrowed 500 bucks from my dad to get to Los Angeles. So right. Here I am, 15 years, 15 years later, with two restaurants. You know, you, you can bust your ass and you can make a success in this country. It's, the streets are... Pays the toll. I still believe it. Yeah. Just, you got to work. You got to work. But if you don't have five grand, you got a thousand bucks, so you got five hundred bucks. You can buy sixty PM leads. Yep. And you're going to sell two, three, four of those, and you transition into a full time job. But I wouldn't transition until I could commit comfortably to at least twenty five, thirty leads a week. You know, and and go and go from there. Yeah. And the other thing, which I know, I know you started, is, is the, the appointment setting. 
Yeah. I, uh, I, I personally believe an appointment setter is the biggest no-brainer in, in final expense. I do too. There are guys that are going to argue you, that back and forth, Peter, but... Money talking, you're not making money talking shit on the phone. You're making money when you're out there selling. Exactly. So and you're going to work an extra 10 hours a week setting appointments for the week. You're a dumbass. Well, you and... Should be resting, you should be resting, getting your, your, your applications cleaned up, making sure all your business is in order, and let that appointment set and make your schedule for you and, and go. I agree. It, it frees you up to concentrate on sales, and brain power does account for a lot of it. And what what guys don't understand that keep that, that want to argue that unless you're receiving X amount of leads a week, you don't need an appointment center. Well, here's my argument for that. All right. Do you want to reduce yourself and turn yourself into a ten, twelve, fifteen dollar an hour person? Because that's in essence what you're doing if you're setting your own appointments. If you're getting twenty, twenty five leads a week, and it's just a better, you know, if you're doing that, then, you know, okay, well, you can't call and set appointments and see people the same day. So you're having to alternate. You're having to call one day and be in the office and then go out and work. And then and then the third day, you're having to call for the fourth day to go see them. It, it, you know, you, you can only be in the field so many days if you're setting your own appointments. Um, and in that case, you're, you know, you're kind of cutting off your nose to spite your face because you're not in front of people at least three days a week. So, absolutely, absolutely. Here's, here's the math. Here's the math on that one, right? So let's say you're doing thirty leads a week, right? Thirty, uh, yeah. Six, uh, 30, 30 DM leads. You're getting thirty DM leads a week. Yep. If your if your appointment setter is is seeding you fifteen times a week. Yep. You're you're paying two hundred and twenty five bucks a month, or I know you're charging eighteen, 18. which is also very fair, by the way. Yep. You're paying two fifty. You're paying two fifty a week for those appointments. That's a thousand bucks a month. Right. If you are, if you're selling fifty percent of those leads, which we all know that the industry industry average is higher than that, your net sales for the month are going to be twenty thousand dollars. So subtract your twenty percent chargebacks, yep. and you're at you know sixteen grand. Yep. And you're paying an appointment set at one thousand dollars. You're an asshole. <laughs> if you're putting in another 40 hours a, a month, excuse my friend, yeah. actually don't, don't excuse it. Okay. If, that's all, if you're paying an appointment set at another thousand bucks a month, if you're not paying an appointment set at a thousand bucks a month and you're working an extra 40 hours a month to get those appointments set to save yourself a thousand bucks. Right. These people know what they're doing. They know how to talk to clients, they know how to get off the phone, close the deal, set the hook, get you in there. It's in their best interest to see that appointment because you're paying only for seated appointments. Exactly. Right, I mean, you, you guys are doing the same thing, right? If, if I get poached, I don't pay. Exactly. They'll try to reset, but you're exactly right. If you don't see them, you don't pay. Yep. So. That's, that's right. Yeah, to me, it's worth a, so, it's so worth then, a shot. You know, if you can do that math, if you can do that math, you can scale it. You can say, okay, I don't want to do 30 leads, I want to do 40 leads a week. You know, and those sitting. Uh, 15 people, you're going to see 20 people. And, you know, the math adds up. And, and this, by the way, is how people do $300,000, $400,000 a year in sales. Yep. That's right. I, mean, I can't I can't argue with that. I mean, I've been using uh, appointment setters and doing direct sales for over 20 plus years. And I've always used appointment setters and telemarketers, you know, to uh, uh, set appointments for, you know, commercial uh, client tail that I had and it's the same thing I mean I you know uh, if people think you know 15 or 18 bucks is a lot of money for an appointment in this I mean I've paid as high as 50 and 60 in other industries um, now those sales cycles were a little longer and you had to work them but still the return on investment was there so I didn't have any problem paying 50 or 60 dollars per appointment you know 10 years ago when uh, you look at the return on investment over a long uh, you know, three, four, five year contract deal. It all made sense. So yeah. Good stuff. Absolutely. Um so getting back to that, what what marketing methods do you employ right now, Peter? Um you do I know you do tele leads and direct mail. Um do you do any internet stuff or what all what all you got rolling? I yeah, I use uh I've used Lee um on some of the internet leads. Uh -huh. Um but, uh, you know, they're, they're dripping. I, I get maybe two, three a week. I've got a bunch of counties. Right. 
but uh, if that, if that, I mean, there's some weeks I don't get any. Right. And, um, and again, the way I look at those inside leads is they are really, really good. They're strong, good leads because the people know exactly what you call them for. Um, so I, I would advise, you know, if, if you're in the area, especially where there's not a lot of FE agents, unfortunately, uh, Houston is one of those areas. Right. Um, but but if you're in a if you're in an area kind of by yourself, um, that's a great marketing tool. Is get get some internet leads. But um, and then I I use it, I use I use them supplementary, just like I do the telephone the right. DMs. Um, and I roll them around. So I've got a bunch of counties, and I'm not scared to drive. I'll drive for three hours, you know, before I call my first person. But I'll I'll spread those leads around because. You know, you buy a lead for ten dollars, a ten dollar TM. I think is what you guys are selling them for, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm at. Um, Correct. So, you know, you can buy sixty of those leads, and you make one sale. The average, the average FE sells six hundred bucks. Right. So, you've got sixty chances to make your money back. Yep. And you know, if, if you if you can't do it, you probably shouldn't be in the game. I mean, yeah, you, <laughs> I would agree. On, 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 your, on your leads, and this is no BS, I think I spent probably about a grand with you, uh -huh. maybe 1200 bucks, but I've made 10 times my money back on sales. Awesome. At least, if not, if, if not more. That's awesome. And yeah, no, it's, 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 it's ridiculous, is what it is. Um, as far as ROI, they, they're better than DMs for me, but. But wow, yeah, you're that's awesome. a massive, you're massive area, you know. I, I did five thousand dollars this month. I'm uh, sorry, five thousand miles this month, just driving around, right? Um, you know, trying to get to all these people, but especially if you're waiting for your DM Lee or to build up, that's it's it's something that I'll continue to do, and you'll you'll see. I'll, well, I'll have much yeah, more and do. something something that caught me, and you're one of the few that does this, Peter. And I wanted to bring this up because when you did it. I was like, huh, this guy really gets it. Because I would say probably one out of ten agents that I deal with with leads um, does this. But I noticed the last time you ordered, your 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 previous order wasn't quite through yet. It was about maybe three-quarters of the way done, and you went ahead and put in another order. And that's smart, and, and guys don't realize the reason you want to do that is because it doesn't affect your lead flow. Because that, that campaign, just like in a direct mail campaign, it starts again, and as the other one's petering out and getting finished, the new one's already started up, and you don't have any... You know, does that make exactly. sense? Exactly, and, 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 and as you'll notice, I overlap them, so I'll yeah. pick two discrete areas, and I'll be halfway through one. What I'm looking at now is I, I try to order from you, I think, about every two weeks. I'll right. Order. Yep. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll feel that the leads are starting to whittle down and, and then I'll get another ordering in the area where some of my, my next DMs are going to start coming from. Smart. So it just gives me another look at, give me another look at the area. And look, you understand that PMs, everybody and their uncle is seeing the same poor aunt, you know, Aunt yeah. Mary. She's, yeah. <laughs> she's getting phone calls from everyone. She refuses to take her name off that no call list. Mm -hmm. So everybody's going to see them. And, and there's one thing I wanted to just kind of reiterate with everybody is, is you've got to if you're going to if you're going to put them into a product, you better you better be damn cheap. Yeah, it better be a good. It better be. It better, it, right it better fit them right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and that, 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 that comes down to having a good, you know, a good group of carriers to draw from, which which is something that I have in, in 360. And, you know, again, I'm, I'm sure FEX and, you know, the other guys have them, but um, you, better have, you better have some low-cost carrier because somebody's going to come replace you. That's right. you got to have good underwriting and know what you're doing, you know, um, yep. especially if you're in a highly populated area or if you got, you know, more than a few agents around, you've got to really have that down. Um, that we are lucky That's to have right. all those carriers that we do have access. I mean, there's not anything that we can't get, you know. So Absolutely. that's what's good. That's what's really strong about the group is there's, you know, I don't even know how many carriers we got, like 20, 25, 30. I mean, if something pops up, we can get it. I know that. So, um, well, yeah, I mean, I, listen, I did, I, and just, I just wanted to just touch on that a little bit. I, uh, I did a, a, a lot of research, and it was kind of compressed over a two-week period, but it was, it was very much touched. 
touch and go between a number of uh, IMOs yeah. and uh, and 360. You know, once once I laid all the cards down and looked at everyone, it was an absolute no-brainer. And then obviously, I was I was lucky. You know, coming in with a guy like like Matt, um, you know, as my as my guy. Oh yeah. So, yeah, Matt's 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 a really 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 good guy. Um, he's very he's very trustworthy. Um, I think a lot of him. I really do. And you know, with saying that as well, Brad is uh, you know that administers all this stuff. He's pretty much uh, you know he's got. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just heard a bunch of stuff. I don't know what that was. It was uh, Sorry, it's just All right. Um, you know, with saying that, Brad does a really good job of administering the direct mail program. And, you know, I, I left for a little while, but, you know, I immediately did a, uh, well, I guess you could say a 180 and came back to 360. <laughs> but, uh, you know, by far, it's the best program out there that I've, that I've, that I've ever seen or looked at. So, yeah. Brad, uh, I haven't met Brad personally. I've uh, spent some personal time with Matt, and I'm just really busy out of I get along Brad. Yep. He's been he's been extremely helpful, and but I but I've got to say, Brad, Brad has been fantastic. He's been he's been fantastic. And, yeah, uh, <clears throat> he'll tell you the very, truth. Very 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 responsive, and um, you know, I I just want to be part of the team, man, and and I hope at some at some stage to be able to contribute back to, to the team. No. Definitely. Uh, so let me ask you, Peter, who who's your favorite carrier? Well, uh, okay. So right now, and this this is one of those things that um, could change in the future. You know, I've, I've, I, <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's, it's, it will change. I, I think there's no. I think there's no doubt. But this is one of those things that I read on the on the boards of you know advice to new agents is is concentrate on a few carriers and I think it's it's crucial. So um, currently I'm favoring uh, Trinity, uh-huh. uh, which is family family benefit life. Right. Um, and uh, SNL. Those, those are my two real kind of go-tos. And then beyond that, um, if I feel like a customer is skeptical of who I am and who we represent, I go to uh, Aetna and Foresters. But I use, you know, all their presentation material and I, you know, I, I jazz it up a little bit, so to speak. So, right. you know, if somebody's in their 70s, if somebody's in their 70s, Aetna is, is always a great, great price. Right. You, they're going to have a real hard time. Um, you know, yeah, they might be able to save them a few bucks a month, two, three dollars a month. But, you know, you're trying to get rid of that Aetna name is going to be tough. So I, I like them. But if uh, if I'm writing and the customer and I get along and they trust me and I can squeeze them in there, I go Trinity first and SNL second. Right. Cool. Yep. I'm a, I am like uh, Trinity and Family Benefit. Uh, I love Aetna. Uh, I love SNL. Um, yeah, I mean, those are those are strong carriers. Um, there's not a lot as far as price points and underwriting a lot of people can do to, you know, get you out from under those. I mean, they're probably probably the, one of the three most competitive uh, carriers out there. And Aetna, for uh, what it's I, worth, I, Aetna I'm just gets at, it right. I'm looking at standard. I'm looking at standard. Yeah. Life, um, yeah, they're uh, good. For, uh, uh, for, for TMs. Um, basically, just to, like I said, low ball the TMs because, you know, there's going to be another 10 guys behind you knocking on that same door. So, yeah. As long as they're not on disability, as long as they're not on disability, standard's good. I mean, they're a little yeah, stricter on underwriting. Number, number of things, yeah. They, they've got to be healthy, absolutely. Yeah. But, but then you've got, you got Trinity and SL of very accepting. That's so. right. Yeah, and the, and the prices are awesome. Really, really good. So, let me ask you, what, um, obviously you kind of looked around. I'm sure you looked at other verticals in insurance. What did, um, you know, like I did myself when I first got into this, and I, I I, you know, I settled in the senior market. What? Why did you pick the senior market and specifically final expense? Because you know, there's Medicare and other stuff out there, but I think you final know, expense is where the bo- big boys go. <laughs> it, it says it right there in the name, Matt. Simplified 
issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I mean, for God, for God's sake, you don't have to be a genius to do this, man. Right. You know, I, um, I, and I, I honestly, I thought it was a, a bunch of BS when I, when I first started seeing what these guys were posting, but, yeah. you know, here I am, I'm, I'm six weeks in and I'm posting, I'm posting numbers that I thought I'd post 12 months or 18 months in. So, right. Um, it's, it's doable, it's simple, it's work your own schedule, you know, you're not carrying this, this complicated book of multiple appointments, uh, you know, this heavy dealing, uh, fully underwritten products, and I, it, it's, it's just an absolute no-brainer. I, I, there was nothing else that even came close. Yeah, I've, uh, you know, simplified issue I think is really important. Um, having that where you can actually, you know, get something done right there versus, uh, you know, fully underwritten or anything. No, I think there's a place for fully underwritten, by the way. So I'm not, yeah. you know, when I walk, in, when I walk into the house, personally, I'm looking at the pictures on the bookshelf. And I'm looking hmm. here and there, and I'm wondering how can I, how can I increase this thing? Am I, can I sell a grandchild? Can I sell a, a, a kid? Can I, you know? Right. So I am looking, I'm looking for other things. If a guy, you know, if I get one of those leads where the guy's in his 40s, um, you know, I look at, I look at things like Forrester's, has got a, has got a great product where they, uh, you know, it's a whole life insurance product, but you can add a, uh, term as a rider. And, right. You know, there's, there's all kinds of, there's, there's, uh, participating plans and all kinds of other stuff. And, and, you know, I, I, when I got into this business, I decided I'm going to learn it. You know, and, and believe me, I don't know shit right now. <laughs> I, I'll be honest with you, but but, I'm, but I but I sit down and I read every night, and I, I I put effort into into understanding the business and learning, and and I try not to make the same mistake over and over. And that's where you know having a good upline and a, and a guy that really knows what he's talking about, like I have with Matt, and 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 to be honest, the whole the whole group at 360, I mean, everyone's so supportive. Yeah. you got a question, you pop it out there, you got 10 guys, you know, dinging you back, and uh, this is just what I would do with it. And, uh, but, but, yeah, I, I, I you know, I, I see there's other money to be made, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's like all sorts of insurance products you can make money on, but, but I, I personally, I'm trying to concentrate mostly on, on Africa. But I'm certainly not going to leave meat on the table if somebody's got a 40 year old son who wants term life insurance. I'm going to, I'm going to sell them. Sure, there's even you know return of premium term products out there that are, are good for that if they don't want to. You know. Absolutely. You know, there's a there's a there's a whole life advantage plan by uh, Foresters, which is a, yep. uh, a participating plan. I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but you know, a guy buys a twenty five thousand dollar policy, and in, you know when he's if he's in his thirties. By the time he's 80, it's going to be a seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars policy. So it's not as complicated as the uh, index universal life. Right. It's got that participation thing, and you know, it's like just stuff like that. And, and believe me, it's not talking to customers, you know, and showing them that you have uh, breadth of knowledge. Um, you're way more likely to, to keep that persistence. Yeah, it takes a certain type of prospect to be able to reveal that stuff too, as well. You know. Um, For sure. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, that's one well, thing. You I, have to have I, I a good radar. I don't know about, I don't know about, uh, about George, but man, I, I, run, I run into a lot of that. I run into a lot of places where I've got a, you know, a grandson or granddaughter right there. And, and you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, what are you doing for insurance? Are you going to wait until you're 85, like your grandma? Or are you going to get yourself sorted out now? You know, there's right. always an upsell. <laughs> that's, right. that's just, that's just, that's just sales, man. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. I don't, we don't run into that too much in Georgia, South Carolina, man, every now and then. But even even doing a child or a grandchild rider, most of the time I'll just write the kid if they're under 18, just a straight, you know, whole life for themselves. Um, Mitchell and Omaha, right? It, well, either them or Standard. Standard's got a pretty good program. Um, that's a pretty good I haven't used pretty Standard, good. but I, 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 like, I like that new product it is so well known. Yeah, exactly. Uh, kind of exactly. My, I've got my kids. I've got my kids on that product. So, you know, yeah. again, I'm not selling something I don't believe in. 
Yeah, it's a it's a um it, it it's a really competitive price too that uh Mutual of Omaha has on those those children policies and you know yeah when it comes to their kids or uh, their grandkids I mean most of them in this area quite honestly they don't give a shit <laughs> they, they just they just don't care they're like hell no they they can take care of themselves you know one out of maybe a hundred I run across that want to do something for their grandkids and then you know if it's uh if it comes with a rider that's really cheap I'll do that or I'll go ahead and get them like I said if the grandkids young enough they can just they can pretty much do the application and sign for them they don't have to have you know anything on them they can they can pretty much do everything for them so um, yeah that's what you run across here probably a little bit more irresponsible than other areas of the country but hey you know, <laughs> that's the way it, that's the way it is <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. so uh, well cool man it sounds like you're launching off the uh, pad there and you're gonna looks like you're gonna um, Probably be setting some records of your own and and be uh be I guess what we call somebody that's going to be you know the one of the long players of the final expense uh, game here. Yeah, no, look, I I've got I've got numbers in my mind, and you know I I, I see what other people are doing, and quite honestly, I'm, I don't compete. I'm not I'm not here to compete. I'm not here to to, you know, show off or anything like that. I, right. I just know what I'm what I'm capable of and 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 I'll be honest with you man, if it if it takes sixty leads a week, I'll pay for it. If right. I can see uh, if I can see the client though. And and I think that's the one thing I I would just tell any rookie to understand if you haven't been in business for yourself, put the money back into your business because this business more than anything else that I've seen you know, listen, I haven't sold crack, but this comes pretty damn close, <laughs> from what I can tell. <laughs> you know, yep. you buy more crack so you can sell more crack, and I mean, this is it. You know, it doesn't matter if you're selling 20% of your leads, or if you're selling 40% of your leads, the numbers add up, you know. I, I think I ran the numbers the other day, and even if you sell 10%, you know, in other words, you sell 25% of your appointments and you sell half of those, Point to your point and to sell half of those, you can still make money in this business. And then it's just a matter of ramping up your lead flow, you know. And um, numbers don't lie, you know. I, I love numbers. So. Yeah, some guys are scared to pull the trigger to get more leads. I understand that, but they gotta understand too. If they do that and they put they put their, you know, it's just like ammo in a gun. They just keep reloading that magazine, and and keep shooting. Then you know they're gonna get they're gonna get the uh, the game they're they're aiming for, you know. I mean, it, it's hard. I guess it's kind of hard to explain unless you go ahead and just do it, you know. Um, well, here's here, 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 here's the deal. I mean, look, I, I, like I said, I've been in business for myself my entire life mm-hmm. since, since I was a young a young guy, and and uh, I've always backed myself, right? And and I just I just had a hunch that I'd be good at this when I got into it, and then I've been all right. I've been good, but. Um, if you're uncertain and you commit to those 20 leads a week and let's say you run them for six months and you kind of know, you know, you can do your averages. You know that you're seeing 40% of the people and you're selling 50% of them. So in other words, you do 20 leads, you get eight appointments, you sell four of them, you're doing 2400 a week, that's 10 grand a month. Once you know that number, if you put time on your schedule, you can scale it to anything you want because those numbers are going to end up you, you'll, you'll double your leads you'll double your sales and that's just a fact that's just a fact yeah you know? and sometimes when it's safer to do the, that it, it's a, it, that, and that's what they say when they when they when they talk about numbers it's, it's a fact and um, you know people get get bogged down with this oh my god I'm not going to spend four grand a month on leads or five grand a month two grand a month or whatever the number is in your head I don't give a shit Matt. I mean honestly I'll spend a hundred grand a month on leads if I can make 250 grand a month on right. leads right honestly. That, that's, a, that's a fact I don't care and um, and you know that's that's my that's my little pearl of wisdom alright <laughs> <I'll be doing. laughs> cool well look uh, is there any anything you want to add um, 
we've been on here probably about 40 minutes, and uh, I know you got stuff to take care of and uh, do, and and uh, I know. Yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll just I'll just say one thing. Um, a um, couple of things. The, the, the insurance board that I think a lot of the guys are on, a bunch of negative negative people on that thing. Yeah, they are. And, you know, if you're a new guy, and I don't, I think this is you very much gearing up your uh, your FX University for the new guys. Right. And you know, the new guys. All I can tell you is get get yourself involved with a good group of people. These guys actually give a damn, you know, and they're going to yeah. teach you everything they know. And and it's up to you to, to suck it in. And and not not all of you will figure out how to do it, but. You know, a lot of you will, especially if you're in the right environment, right group of guys. And uh, I think there's a lot to be said for having empathy for your client and not being a smart ass and just running out to make the money. You've got to, you've got to love what you do, like any other business. You, you, you have to respect what you do, respect yourself. You know, love, love what you do, and and know the business, right? I mean, yeah. Just hey, man, I made two grand on that dumbass. I did this. That's you're setting yourself up for failure. You've got to respect your client, um, no matter what walk of life they, they come from. But, no, that, that's, that's my advice for that. So, um, it's a great business to be in. You, you can make a lot of money, and you know you have ultimate freedom to, um, to just really make unlimited, unlimited money, honestly. So it's uh, something that I'd advise people to get into if they're looking for something. Cool. Well, I couldn't say it any better myself, Peter. That sounds good. And um, I'll uh, what I'll do is I'll get this all edited out and uh, get it set up. And as soon as I have it ready, I'll, like everybody, I'll uh, shoot you a link and post it. And you can listen away. And I hope you're not one of them kind of people that hates hearing your voice because... <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna hear it. Um, oh my god! It'll be it's gonna be out there, my man, on the World Wide Web. So um, <clears throat> we'll see. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably be a few hundred I'll, views I'll, in the first I'll, day I'll, or two. I'll, I'll see you on the thing, mate. And uh, I know you like me. We're gonna do. We're both gonna do two fifty, three hundred this year. So hey, I'm well, on. Well, I'm on well, track well, to. Uh, well, I'm on track know, to get close. Well. Yeah. I know you are. Yep. I know you are. I know you can do it. So, and I'll be there right with you. Hell yeah! I'll drink it up on the next on the next trip. That's what I'm saying. Because I, I I still wanna I still wanna take advantage of a couple of those beers at your restaurant. <laughs> well, I'll get rid of your damn kidney stones or whatever. You ah, want. tell me about it, dude. Tell me about it. They're bad. They're bad. All right, then. All right, buddy. Well, I, thanks look, for having I, me and we'll we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, man, I appreciate it, Peter. You be you be care you be careful out there, okay? See you, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All righty, guys. There you go. Another uh, great interview. I appreciate Peter taking time to uh, spend with us today and uh, look forward to uh, talking with him again in the future. Uh, Pass it around. Um, This was a good interview for vets as well as rookies, so uh, maybe you can help some people. Again, for the best final expense leads in the country, visit us at www.theleadjerk.com. Again, www.theleadjerk.com. Thanks, guys.